Uh, so hi, Alyssa. Um, I'm super excited that you could join us today. Um, the, the motto of the Women's Summit is Super Women. What does Super Women mean to you? I think Superwoman for me is just someone who is capable of doing a lot of different things. Um, I think even uh, something that you wouldn't even consider like crazy, like sometimes when you look at moms, you call them a superwoman or, you know, just being able to juggle so many different things and accomplish so many different things all around, just being able to do that makes you a superwoman. I feel like it's something that anyone can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, you started to dream of being an astronaut from like at a very young age. What motivated you to start this journey to start your astronaut training? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when I was younger, I was basically just always fascinated with space and always had an interest in space. And um, going off of that, I mean, I was asking my dad questions. I was asking for videos and posters and books and anything to do with space. And pretty much the more I learned about space, the more interested I was in it. And then kind of growing up, getting to go to space camp for the first time and then learning all the facts about space history, I was even more immersed. So I think it was just like an initial little fascination. And then from then on, it was just like, the more I learned, the more I was like, yes, this is for me, nothing else. Nice. So the, at the point where we are right now, there are still more male astronauts than female astronauts. Um, why, why do we need more women in space? Why is that important? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for promoting more women in space is just really promoting that another young girl who is looking at um, different options, maybe she just realizes that it is an option for her and can also see other role models um, to kind of look up to. And that's just typically just through like societal norms, like girls kind of slowly get pushed to certain directions and guys do too. And and so it's kind of breaking down some of those traditional barriers that we have and just, you know, letting a girl realize that, um, yeah, there are a lot of girls in STEM and it's just as accessible for you to go into it as a guy to go into it. Um, and so it kind of starts with just having that representation for other young girls to see. Um, and I think we've made huge accomplishments. Um, Obviously, there are a lot more female astronauts now than there used to be, so it's already an accomplishment. But uh, yeah, I think it's just going to be continuing to um, even that out a little bit because it makes no difference when you're in space. So we might as well have uh, have any and everyone going. Nice. So you mentioned this this barrier that um, some some girls maybe perceive or have. Um, why why do you think this imbalance between uh, male and female astronauts? Uh, exists in the first place. Yeah, so the uh, barrier for women in the space industry kind of stems back to the beginning of the space industry. So when we uh, were first starting a space program, um, basically there were 13 uh, female astronauts that actually um, tried and went through all the same training as the guys did but basically based on societal norms none of the women were allowed to go to space because basically what they thought was if anything happened if anything went wrong if a woman were to have like died in an accident then they would have assumed that the space program just would have been shut down completely rather than if a male had died well they were in war they were doing all this other stuff so maybe you know the space industry would still have a chance and so based on that the very beginnings of the space industry were entirely male dominated no women were allowed to go to space um, and so kind of because of that there's a little bit of an imbalance because we were seeing that not only from the astronaut side, but a little bit from the industry side as well, you know, people working for the space industry. And so that kind of generated a little bit of an imbalance. Um, and that imbalance, you know, being fully male dominated was through, you know, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, we really didn't start first seeing women go to space until the shuttle program. And that feels relatively recent to me. I mean, I was alive to see shuttle launches. Um, so really women having an opportunity in space is still relatively new. Mm -hmm. Is there anything a female astronaut can actually do better than a male astronaut? 
Yeah, so there's actually a few things. So going back to mentioning that there were female astronauts that did some of the trainings when the space program was first starting. Um, so they were called the Mercury 13. Actually, the women outperformed the men in a lot of the tests uh, in the beginning. But like I said, they still weren't given the opportunity, even though they just did better and scored better on a lot of different things. Um, but yeah, there actually are a few other, I guess, aspects of space. So uh, one typically with G4. So typically women are shorter and smaller. And typically when you're shorter and smaller, you can take Gs more so you can handle a high amount of Gs. So for like a, a rocket launch, you know, having that pressure, women can typically take that easier. Um, also going off the fact of being lighter, things like that, weight is very important in space. And so you could potentially have more astronauts on a mission if let's say they were all female. Um, and yeah, overall, there's been a lot of research um, happening between, you know, men and women and the effects of the body and things like that in space. And, you know, they've thrown around mentions of, you know, future missions, having all female crews for certain things. So we'll see what happens, but there are at least a few benefits. Okay, so Alyssa, let's come back to you maybe. Um, what are your role models um, and what are female scientists that you look up to? Yeah, I definitely have a lot of role models. When I was nine, I met uh, astronaut Sandra Magnus, and she was a female shuttle astronaut. And so being able to actually meet her and ask her, you know, oh, when did you decide you wanted to be an astronaut? And hearing her story just kind of taught me that it didn't matter the age I had decided to do this. If it was something I was truly passionate about, then I could work towards it and potentially make it into a reality. Um, but I mean, even nowadays, you know, I'm studying astrobiology. And so if I find like an astrobiologist online, I'm like, oh my gosh, let me look at all the research they're doing and let me, you know, see what they're up to. And so that's really cool to even, you know, scientists that may not even feel like they have that big of a role, but even finding another female in astrobiology is like huge because when I first started college, it took me at least a year to find another girl in my major. Um, and so it took quite some time. So even just seeing professionals working in the field is always exciting. So I love seeing what all they do. Mm -hmm. So on your TikTok, you, you're trying to motivate young women um, to go into a STEM career. Why, why is STEM and science so important to you? Yeah, I think that it's really important to bring STEM down to kids. Um, I think for one, I know that like when I was in school, you know, I kind of heard the same jobs over and over again, you know, be a doctor, teacher, lawyer, like the same three pretty much. And it was kind of like, what else is there? And I think space is one of those jobs or space in the STEM industry is one of those jobs that we kind of forget about pretty frequently. Or if we don't forget about it, typically it's very misunderstood. You know, a lot of times we'll say engineering okay but like what does that mean you know what does that actually look like as a job you know what would you actually be doing as an engineer um or if i were to you know tell someone i'm studying astrobiology they would have no idea what my like day-to-day -day job would look like to have a realistic idea if they would be also interested in doing it mm -hmm. so i think stem kind of gets jumbled around pretty frequently with different terms and obviously you can get very complicated very fast so i think it's also really important to just kind of show uh, kids what STEM looks like because that makes a lot more sense for them to see like oh that looks cool I want to be doing what that is whatever the name of it you know but I want to actually be doing that and so kind of showing them that makes a big difference and also they'll kind of realize some more opportunity you know I loved talking with kids and saying, you know, sure, in the space industry, we have astronauts and engineers, but we also have people um, like psychologists that study astronauts living, you know, with one another for six months at a time. We have people that have to make the food for the astronauts. We have uh, spacesuit designers and all these jobs that you would never consider. Um, and they just aren't talked about as much. And so it's really cool to be able to share that because then their faces kind of light up like, ooh, space fashion designer, all these like crazy <laughs> sounding jobs, you know, but they are real and they, uh, you know, are involved in sending astronauts to space, so. Yeah. So during your NASA uh, space camps, you completed a lot of different uh, trainings. Uh, for example, water survival training, you mentioned G-force training already, um, microgravity flights, and so on. For you, what was, what was the toughest training you completed so far? 
Um, yeah, so definitely for like physical toughness would definitely be the water survival training. And that was mainly just because we were in spacesuits and we were in the water and we had to pull ourselves into like life rafts. And doing that individually um, was very difficult. We did it as a team first and that was easy because like, you know, you were pulling, but your teammates were also pulling you up and pushing you so you could get in really easily. But we also had to do it by ourselves. And so having no one um, help you, first of all, getting in a life raft in general is just relatively difficult, but, you know, adding the extra weight of the spacesuit, we had an oxygen tank on our leg, just made it all around physically difficult. Um, and so I was seeing people much older than me uh, much stronger than me also struggling because I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Yeah, I think that some of the trainings have also been mentally challenging. I think a great example of that was when I did skydiving, um, just kind of getting through the mental block of like jumping out the door because for my first few jumps, I would like jump out and then come back in and then, you know, kind of like play around at the door before actually jumping off the plane. Um, and that was just kind of getting through it and pushing myself out of my comfort zone, but also some of those like mental challenges is very rewarding because you can do things that you didn't know you could. Hmm. Yeah. So one one of your goals is to become the first woman on Mars. Um, what excites you most about this dream? Yeah, I think um, I'm really just excited to uh, start working in the space industry and in general, just, you know, wherever that uh you know, falls into, but also just, you know, hopefully excited to continue pushing the idea of missions to Mars, you know, it's very long term goals and Currently, we're trying to get people back to the moon at the moment. So in the next few years, we'll have missions going back to the moon. But I think it just excites me to think that the idea of long-term space exploration is on the table and mm -hmm. we'll, able, we'll be able to do and gain a lot of knowledge from that that hopefully benefits future generations. Yeah. So when, when you talk about space, you seem so relaxed. Like when I imagine going to space, like uh, I'm, I, I become scared very quickly. Um, are you ever scared yourself? Um, I'm not really. I mean, there's not really much about space that really scares me. Um, probably for multiple reasons. I mean, one, I guess the risks of space I've learned about for so long. Um, I guess another thing is space is a lot safer than it used to be. You know, we kind of had a lot of experimental stuff going on in the early space uh, days, which we probably still think about, but uh, technology is much more advanced now, which is also helpful. But I think the biggest thing is being able to meet people who work in the space industry. You see how passionate they are and you see how much care they put into everything. And so even if it's something that's small as one screw you know they're already thinking like someone could be on top of this rocket one day and so they're you know double checking triple checking making sure everything is as good as possible it takes years to build a rocket you know we definitely don't do it overnight um you know the sls has been an idea slash being built for the past 10 years you know it takes a lot of time to get those together and so just kind of having that knowing so many people put their passion and care into it is definitely reassuring yeah. So last question, uh, what are your hopes and dreams for the future? <laughs> Yeah, I think my hopes and dreams of the future, really just um, the biggest thing that I want to do in general is just like contribute to the space industry in any way that I can. I think, you know, when I was younger, I was, you know, just kind of interested in space because it was cool. But then like the more I learned about space, I saw a lot more of like the benefits of space and, um, you know, the benefits of, you know, continuing to make progress in space. And so I think now, especially about to graduate as you know, a scientist, I think it's just wanting to contribute and kind of um, provide any any help or um, contribute to a lot of the issues that we're still facing, you know, for example, some of the research I could fall into could be looking for signs of life. Um, also looking at some of the issues that we may still have with missions to Mars and seeing if some of my research could contribute to that. So being able to play a part, I feel like makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Alyssa. I wish you the best of luck for there are many, many plans um, and ambitions. Um, thanks also for sharing what being a superwoman means to you. Um, yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.